I sort of feel disconnected from this audience here. You know how life just sort of takes you in a different direction? I've never ever once left like the outdoor space, taxidermy, hunting, fishing, never. But I've been in and out of a few career changes like my 40 hour week and uh, when you first get started, man, it just consumes you. So thank you for hanging in there and still watching. I think about this space all day, every single day. It's just hard when you're committed to a particular uh, business to just chase what you truly love, but I'm sure that'll come around in due time. Today, we're looking at, that's an Alaskan moose. They're just cool. You guys know me. You know that I'm antler crazy just got dropped off by a friend thank you Keith we're just gonna crown mount it today and because uh, that process I don't think I've ever really perfected on film as far as giving a good example of just exactly how to do it I'll just continue to try until I get it right this is the easiest way for me to sort of explain it picture your flat surface like this as your wall right I want that thing to be just about like that off the wall. I would like to have an even gap on the back. So when I walk in the room and look at it, I'm looking at those big, beautiful pants. Because of that, I have to trim the base of this a little bit. So I'm gonna take those eye sockets and cut them both to the 45. I'm just gonna do that by hand because I'm gonna hand shape everything. And then I'm gonna cut the base, all this stuff down here. So this is nice and level. Then I'm gonna screw it off to a board. And to be honest with you, I'm just gonna let the camera run and then I'll probably do a bunch of voiceover because it's hard to sort of film and then mess with mud. Thank you like always for watching. Let's crown one. Now tell me the truth, did any of you go like, wow, interesting music choice, Ryan? Because I did. So I just left it, because I'm hoping you thought the same thing. On this deal, you could see where I just trimmed those eye sockets back. I sort of leveled off the bottom of that skull, cleaned up some of that nasal cavity junk. Then I cut a board, which is gonna be my back plate. That's what I'm gonna screw my panel to. And it also gives me a flat, even surface. What I'm doing now is I'm just shoring up all the sides, sort of working little wedges of wood in there to, to sort of fill in space. And then I'm gonna anchor it off as best I can. I even come from the bottom and I screw right into the pedicle of that antler. So it's really secure because everything that's being supported on the wall is that little board in the back. That's what I'm doing here. This screw right here is absolutely anchoring this thing. It is not coming out under any circumstances. Unless, of course, I decide to unscrew it. <laughs> it's always that. From here, I take my back panel, which stays on the mount, and I screw it to a separate board. This board acts as my wall, as a flat surface. Then I take a little shrink wrap and I go around the base of the antler so I don't get a whole bunch of concrete just around that antler. It does clean up really easy, but it's super easy for me just to put a little shrink wrap on there. Finally, once I have all that in place and I have a rough idea of what I want to accomplish as far as shape goes, and then I mix plaster of Paris and quick setting cement together, roughly 50-50. If it's setting off too fast for you, I would use less plaster of Paris and more cement. In my climate right here, this thing will literally set off, meaning get hard in like five minutes. Super, super fast, you gotta work quick. If you're in a cooler environment or use cooler water, it will take longer for sure. But I like to cram it into every little open pocket in that sort of thing that I built there around the crown. And then I start to smooth with my fingers, then a knife, and then 
I patch and this is your own individuality. There's nothing I can tell you here that's gonna create your shape. The beauty of this, if you don't like it, if it just doesn't turn out right, it's very inexpensive. You can just take a hammer to it, knock it all off and start over. It's totally worth taking the risk and creating your own individual shape in what you wanna see. All right, I got it shaped. It took about 20 minutes all total because I had a few low spots that I filled in, things of that nature. I unscrewed it from the board and I just sort of leaned it up against the house. Then I went and just mixed up some epoxy. You can literally use any epoxy you want. Stuff from the 99 cent store is ideal. A bucket, a cheap paintbrush, whatever. And I just coated onto all of that concrete. By nature, that concrete that I have right there will split. It just will. It's a very hot batch, a very thin, like, sort of area that you cover. Some areas are heavy and some areas are thin. Those thin areas will crack. This epoxy wipe will smooth the surface, lock everything in, and just make it really, really, really clean. I actually did this on accident, and then now I make it a standard practice for every single crown mount I do. This song is called The Happy Cowboy, and though I am not a cowboy, I'm happy. So why not? Let's just make it a whole bunch of interesting music doing this kick butt crown mount. I love it. Okay. It's been 24 hours, everything's dry, and I have a few very visual imperfections. So I'm gonna sand off all the high sides, anything that's irregular. I'm gonna take a little two part epoxy, fill in my little voids and gaps, and I'm just gonna mess with it, get it the shape I want, and then we're gonna stretch a little leather. About 100, <laughs> about 100 things wrong with this, but I'm moving forward regardless. I'm trying to get this done to give it back to the client tomorrow at like a fundraiser event. I didn't have enough leather to cover this whole thing, which is a shame because I think I stay on top of that pretty good, but apparently not. So I ran over to a local tanny leather and I bought a small animal hide and I bought a pigskin hide. The reason I like thin antelope, deer, elk, whatever's thin, I want it to stretch. The stretch is really key to getting a nice smooth finish. I have a few low points that are in spots that will get covered. So I'm gonna take a risk and I'm gonna put the small leather that I bought on this animal. If you're wondering what your finish is going to look like, you can stretch it like this. You get away with a lot in the suede side. So right here is not bad. You can see here there's a little dimple there. This is going to get an opposite colored band. Long story short, I'm going to stretch it and if I don't like it, I'm going to leave that layer as a layer of cushion order the right stuff, and then I'm gonna go over that one, if that makes sense. It'll get rid of all the sort of bumps and irregularities. Remember, handcrafted, hand-shaped. It's not gonna be perfect. There is no reference for perfect here. There's no, you're never gonna look at it the same way. It's always a little off, just go with it. If, unless it's glaring, do it the way you like it best. Okay, spray adhesive. Stretch, cut, stretch, cut, stretch, cut. Here we go. 
Now, I left this portion in the film because it's a perfect example of things just don't always go right. My gut told me this ain't going to work, but I went ahead and tried it anyway, and literally that leather would not even stick to the spray adhesive. Long story short, I pulled it off, I went back into my bin, and I thought, hey, well, hell, I'll explain it to you. I'm not a good quitter. I found a couple of smaller chunks, right? It looks like that should be enough, but it's really just not. And I like the suede side. So I think I'm going to go as far as I can across the front and top. And then I'm going to do my wraps with a patch. <laughs> okay. Never give up. Here's the rules here. We're using spray adhesive on all things concrete so the leather sticks to that exterior. And then we're wrapping it nice and tight around the back or our wooden board side. And we use a little hot glue to hold everything in place nice and tight. We have to make a cut to go around the antler. And then we try to make a seam in the back of the antler that you wouldn't see from the front, if that makes sense. So you make a straight line with your leather cut and then you cover that with a leather strap, sort of like a, a pedicle wrap. That's all very, very basic. Just make sure you don't have adhesive on your fingers when you touch your finished leather. Other than that, it's trial and error, pull and stretch, glue, cut, tear, repeat, do whatever you gotta do. This is where you get good at this process. Say hello. It's that time of year where the fireworks are just wearing him out. Okay, here we go. Come here. My board is not quite wide enough or long enough, so this is what I was thinking I was gonna use. So I went to Hobby Lobby, nine bucks for this one, three bucks for this one, 20 bucks for this one. I'm just gonna see which one I like the look of. Okay, Moose Crown project is all finished. I'm way down here because you can see there's shade up there and I don't have a giant wall. Uh, it looks really, really nice considering I thought I didn't have enough leather to go around it. I actually put a secondary wrap on my leather because I had quite a wrinkle up against the pedicle there. It looks really, really cool and I just tied that one off so I could adjust it, change it, whatever. Make sure the client's happy with it. Um, I love it, that's it. Don't be afraid to try things. Sometimes they're really easy, sometimes they're a huge pain in the butt. It's worth it every second if the client can look at this on his wall and just take a second and reflect on that memory he had with that animal. Thanks for watching, be kind to one another. Yeah.